defending Ambassador Gruminsky would stop us. You thought establishing that fool and defeating a Pravia and Fowlerland would stop us. You are wrong. So, so wrong. Today, we shall look at how wrong you are. First, with a look at how this book, with enough shovels, is wrong. Do you really think these are enough to stop the glorious forces of the Soviet Union? Here, in my secret base, don't tell anyone, underneath Magenta Square, we are ready to attack. After that, we shall look at how you're going to try to stop us. How you will stop the mighty forces of the Magenta Army as our glorious tanks roll across Europe. <laughs> This is Nuclear Fallout Shelter, or Nuclear Fallout, from Tim Hartnell's Giant Book of Spectrum Games. It was written by Tim D. Rogers. So the game, the book itself notes, you may object to the basic formula setting of the game, and you can change it to something else. A later version of this game appeared called Avalanche, possibly by a different author. So, we're in charge of civil defence, we need to build fallout shelters in case nuclear war breaks out, and nuclear war will break out. We have a population of 10,000 people and a budget of £10,000 and that's all the money we're ever going to get. Each, each citizen needs 10 cubic metres to survive. Each cu cu cubic metre costs a pound. So to start with we can only save a thousand people. But the money we don't spend we get 10% interest. So the longer we wait the more people we can save. However there's always a chance of a nuclear war. If you don't save half the people, the survivors will rise up and lynch you for doing such a poor job. And of course, unfortunately, the number of the chance of nuclear war increases year on year. Oh dear. But hopefully everything will be fine and this will just be an interesting exercise. Touch wood. So year one, uh, you've got £10,000. That's not enough. So I think I'm going to wait and spend no money this year, and see how we get on. Oh dear, nuclear war, we had no shelter, everybody died. Press enter to continue. So more more than half, where well, everybody died, and everyone else revolted against me. Should you try again? Yes, that was a bit unlucky, having nuclear war on the first turn. Possibly um, Operation Able Archer went a bit awry. So I think we should try that again, with a different strategy. I don't want instructions, they don't call me kiddo. It's rather strangely friendly for such a grim game. So this year, I think we should spend a £1,000 on shelter. So we spent a £1,000... And we get interest in what's left. So I'm, I'm going to keep spending £1,000 each year. So each year we get to save 100 more people. And hopefully by the end we'll be able to save more people than we would at the start. So we currently save 300 people. Keep spending 1000 Year 4, as you can see, the chance of attack is increasing. Currently 15 to 1. Another £1,000. 14 to 1. We've got five, we saved 500 people. But it's not really anywhere near enough. Only the, probably the beautiful elite, perhaps. And possibly, obviously, I'm going, I'm going to save my subscribers. So all you guys, you're safe. You're, you're, yeah, you're all in the shelter now. Um, we can save yeah, up to eight hundred of you. So save another thousand people. Oh, nuclear attack! So it's hard to read because they don't clear the screen. Uh, we've saved 900 people and we've lost 9,100. Again, we've lost more than half. Uh, I'm not sure this game is actually winnable. Especially as people only, are only willing to spend a pound each. And you need ten pounds each and no one's ever to try again. So, let's fix the problem where the screen doesn't clear. So after nuclear attack we do some stuff and it doesn't bother clearing things. So that's not very tidy. Also, you can see here, population protected, more than the masses. Let's look at the top. Now, here we are. So what I'm going to do is put a clear screen in. 
So at least we can see clearly what's going on. And let's try again. Don't call me kiddo. So this time we're going to spend all the money at the start. Just to see how ridiculous it gets. So yeah, we've got all the money. Can I send any? No, I can't go into debt. I can't borrow money. I've just... Yeah, I've, I've saved a thousand people. One in ten. A number on a list. We are the one in ten. The number... Oh, nuclear attack! Clear the screen. We've saved a thousand people. We've lost nine thousand. So we've... But we're still going. We've lost 90% of the population, but the survivors, they're quite happy with that. So let's keep going. We've got no more money. 9,000 dead. Let's keep going. The year 19, chance of attack 1 to 1. And there's another nuclear attack. Again, we've... Uh, Save 10, 900 of what who was left. Because the shelter gets worn out. I got through the troubled times with no money, 900 people and 8,100 cubic metres of shelter. Do you want to play again? Uh, no, because it doesn't match what the instructions say. So let's look at how the nuclear attack stuff works. These are the instructions. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Right, line... Let's see now. Everyone was double bar. Let's have a look. Nuclear attack. Line eleven twenty is one of interest. X is the number of dead. So if if X divided by P is greater than point nine, so if you've lost ninety percent, more than ninety percent of the people, you go to fifteen hundred. Not more than half. It's ninety percent. So you can basically win the game on turn one by spending all the money. A strange game, the only winning move is not to play. Third World War. You are the commander of NATO forces in Europe at the outbreak of war. You direct land forces between the reserves and the five front-line sectors. You cannot send forces between sectors. If either side penetrates to a depth of 100 kilometres inside enemy territory with sufficient force, then the war is over. It is also possible to start an all-out nuclear war, destroying the whole world if you are not careful. This is from Creating Political and Military Simulation Games on Your Micro by Mike Rose. I've made some tweaks and additions. The first you can see here is the font. I've added a custom font from an Italian utility. The details will be below. It's a sort of military font. There are a couple of minor tweaks I've done, as you, you shall see, to go through. But essentially, in this game, the Soviet Warsaw Pact people are attacking, and we have to stop them. Day one of the battle. This is the main thing you'll see. You can display situation in a sector. You can move between the reserves. I'm looking at a sector now. Which sector do we want? Look at our reserves. We have 100,000 infantry, 400 tanks, 500 artillery, and 150 missile launchers. Artillery is very good at killing infantry, and missile launchers are used to knock out tanks. It is infantry and tanks, though, that gain ground. So here, all I've done is give us a nice military-style font. So day one, I'm doing nothing. I'm going to lure the enemy forward, and then paints where they're weakest. So we're not, what the first thing we see here is I've given all the sectors names. The first sector is a northern sector, which I called Schleswig-Holstein. The enemy have just under 20,000 infantry there, 80 tanks-ish, 100 artillery, and 12, 29 missile launchers, and we've retreated 12 kilometers. This same is true for the second sector, Elba, as I imagine is the one south of the Elba. Again, and there are 3% chemical shells. Sector 3 is Cassel. Again, just under 20,000 infantry. We were treated by 11. Go through this a bit quickly now. The Fulda Gap, which is a nice river valley. 3% biological shells, 3% chemical. And finally, I've called Sector 5 Bavaria. So the enemy have advanced. They've committed all their 
troops. So now I'm going to pounce and send my troops into sector three, which is to fill the gap. I'm going to choose infantry and I'm going to send 50,000 infantry in. I'm now going to add tanks, which would be half my tanks. The idea is I shall hopefully wipe out the Warsaw Pact forces there and then get a big push through. Half our artillery and half our missile launchers. And let's see how we get on. It goes red, another addition. When the Warsaw Pact player is thinking, I make the border go red. Red for communism. So, Schleswig Holstein, they've reinforced it and pushed forward. Apparently, the game has a very simple um, Warsaw Pact AI. However, it moderately uh, reacts to. Um, not reacts, what's the word am I after? It's quite similar to a reported Soviet um, Warsaw Pact strategy. So in Kassel, with the enemy has 16,000 infantry and nothing else, but they've pumped up the special shells to around 25% each. 25% yeah, biological, things like cholera, smallpox, Ebola, 25% chemical, mustard gas, phosgene, and 29% tactical nuclear weapons. In Fulda, they're only using 4%. So the enemy's strategy it will attack my highest concentration of men and tanks with appropriate countermeasures, missile launchers and artillery, and also put the most infantry and tanks into the sector with the greatest advance or retreat. The sector three, we've got 34,000, and we've nearly pushed them back to the Warsaw Pact border, the Iron Curtain. But we've lost 16,000 troops. Not really ideal. And we also lost most of our tanks. So let's reinforce the sector with what are we doing here? I was trying what I was trying to do was take to the reserve, but I got it the wrong way around. So I'm sending into sector three a small amount of reinforcements. You see here I wasn't this is wasn't wasn't what I was trying to do, I was trying to withdraw the troops. I'm playing a, a sort of cat and mouse game with the Soviets. So let's try it again. Yeah, I've put far too much troops in here. So instead you need to move troops to... It's, it's too rich sector. You can move troops to the reserve by selecting sector 6. And then it says where do you want to move them from? Nothing in Sesame Holstein. We've retreated 23 kilometres. Let's see how we get on with a big push in Sector 3, the Fulda Gap. For sector 1, they've got 20,000 infantry and pushed forward another 11 kilometres. In the Elba, 18,000 pushed forward 10 kilometres. In Cassel, they've only got just under 10,000 troops and lots and lots of Biological, biological weapons flying around. That's because I've put a lot of troops there and we've killed a lot of the enemy. And we've pushed forward 18 kilometres. So I believe we're now actually in East Germany or the German Democratic Republic or DDR. Not to be confused with Doom Dark's Revenge or Dance Dance Revolution. But a lot of biological, chemical and nuclear weapons which are have a great negative effect on my troops. I've not used any of those yet. I've been a, I've been very nice. Sector four, we pulled back another twelve kilometres. We've not even attacked the enemy here. They're pouring through this gap. And finally, the Bavarian front. Again, we've retreated by nine kilometres. They've got still got nineteen thousand troops rampaging around. Day four of the battle. So let's look at the one we care about. So Schleswig Holstein, we've pulled back 34 kilometres. In the Elbe, 30 kilometres. Cassel, 16 kilometres. That's what our big push is. We have 50,000 troops. We actually know we've gone forward 16 kilometres, sorry. Fulda, we're back 35. Remember the goal is 100 kilometres. And Bavaria, we've pulled back 30. So 
I believe I'm sending troops into number four. 20,000 troops. And let's move now into sector four, which is, the, which is full by 200 artillery. Moving to sector four, 150 missile launchers. All we've got left is 75. We're now escalating. We're adding 10% of biological weapons. 15% chemical. We're escalating and we're choosing nuclear weapons 30% of tactical nuclear weapons. Let's see how we get on. Little mushroom clouds. And the Cassell front. We've pushed forward by 12 kilometers, but there were an awful lot of dirty bombs flying around. And the Fulda, we've treated two kilometers, a lot of chemical and nuclear weapons lurking about. And how's Bavaria doing? 16,000, and we've lost another 10 kilometers. A nuclear holocaust has broken out. The world is destroyed on day four. Do you want another game? Yes, please. So again, we're going to try and lure the enemy forward. And this time be a bit more tricksy. The enemy have pulled forward. Just like before, they've committed equal troops to each sector. So the enemy have 22,000 troops in Schleswig Holstein. They've pushed us back. We expected that. The aim is to kill them, not to push them back too far. Sector 2, the Elba, we've pushed forward 20 kilometers which is nice. A lot of dirty bombs, though. And we have 20,000 enemy troops in Schleswig Holstein. We've retreated 10 kilometers. I think we're nearly back to the West German border. The Elbe front, 15,000 troops, lots of dirty bombs. We've pushed forward 12 kilometers, which is nice. I'm putting everything now into Bavaria. We'll see, and we see how this gets on. So, Schleswig Holstein, we've not caused that many casualties. They've got 18,000 here. They start with 100,000, by the way. They start the exact same number of troops as we do. So 18,000, give or take. Here they have 16,000, which is 34,000 in total. Here they have 14,000-ish, which is 48,000. In Fulda, 14,000, so 48. 58, 62,000. I don't think our strategy is working. And here they have 12,000. They have 74,000 troops. We don't have that many. They are, they are bleeding us. So, Varia, we have all our troops. We only, we only have 26,000 soldiers. Which is more than them in this sector. But that's all we've got. These losses are unsustainable. Now, sector four, we slowed them down. We've actually pushed them back by four kilometers. They still have 10,000 troops though. But everywhere else, it's unstoppable. It's like in the, in the Shining when they open that lift. So let's see, let's leave it as it is for the day. In full, we pushed them back by three kilometers and they only have 5,700 troops left. Lots of dirty bombs around, though. And in Bavaria, we've only got eleven thousand troops, but we can't got we can't stop for them. So let's leave things running. The hope is we push forward far enough into their territory that they surrender before they capture us in the other four sectors. Con concentration of force, like a stiletto rather than a steamroller. 
we've only pushed them back two kilometres. And I think all the dirty shells are killing us. But Bavaria, we've put, they push us back seven. That's three times as much losses as we've gained. So let's look at Sector 4. Even Sector 4, we are 33 kilometres behind the lines. But we have gained one kilometre by crawling along the ground, possibly clutching our guts. And Bavaria have lost another four kilometres. So the enemy penetrated 100 kilometres into our territory in Sector 3, Cassel. NATO surrenders, borscht in the White House on day 14. That was my addition. I made the victory and defeat a bit more interesting. We're now going to try again. This is our third attempt. And this time we're being clever. What we're going to do is use dirty weapons. Dirty weapons are great at killing the enemy. They will match whatever we use. However, if we don't commit any troops, then they won't be affected in that sector, because our troops won't be in that sector. So the idea is the Soviets and their pals would advance. The key thing is to stay below 50% nuclear in each sector. So I'm only going to use 20% nuclear. They, they'll match it maybe plus or minus 5. So hopefully we can avoid a holocaust. So day one of the battle. They usually commit 20,000 troops to each sector. So, so far they've, they've got 15,000 in sector 1. I'm presuming that they've taken over 5,000 casualties on day 1 in this sector. They're now at half their strength in Sector 1. They're now at 6,000 troops in Schleswig-Holstein. And they're only advancing 4 kilometres per day. They've lost 80% of their troops. So, what we're going to do now is pick a sector, Sector Bavaria, and we're going to stop using nasty shells. Because the, the Warsaw Pact forces match our nasty shells, and nasty shells kill our troops, we don't want them being used. And they have a smattering of them. You still need to be careful, but they're less than 10% troops and no nasty stuff. So day nine, in Bavaria, we're going to add 50,000 infantry, 200 tanks, 250 artillery pieces and 75 missile launchers. And let's see how we get on. But in Bavaria, the enemy have no troops left at all and we push them back 17 kilometers. A lot of nasty bombs though. A lot of nasty bombs were turned up. So let's see what Bavaria is like. We're not using any nasty bombs. But we are pushing them back quite well. And we're 13 kilometres on the wrong side of the border. The question is, are there nasty bombs going to kill our troops faster than, than we can win the war? In Bavaria, we've pushed forward 12 kilometres. A lot of nasty bombs. So let's check how we're doing in... We're going to... Let's see what we're doing. In Fulda, they've got 40 troops. And in Bavaria, we've pushed forward another seven kilometres. So let's add another 5,000 infantry to, to Bavaria. And another 100 tanks. And the artillery we've got left. And the missile launchers. So we now have lots and lots of troops, and we're 16 kilometres to the good. Here in Bavaria, we've advanced another 14 kilometres. I added an extra 10,000 infantry into Bavaria. We're now in day 17, 
and Bavaria is currently 57 kilometers into the communist bloc. Two days left to win the war. We have 10,000 infantry in reserve. So I'm going to commit the whole lot into Bavaria. And all 50 tanks. That's everything we've got. In Bavaria, we've now pushed forward 23 kilometers, up from 14 last, last turn. So in Bavaria at 94, one more day should do it. We've still got 40,000 troops left, just about. Bavaria, we'd advance another 20 kilometers. That's 114. We penetrated 100 kilometers inside Sector 5, Bavaria. The enemy have surrendered. Berger and Fries in the Kremlin on day 19. Huzzah! Thank you for watching. Fallout Shelter was interesting. World War 3 is much more fun, and we learned that you really do have to deploy ABC weapons to stop the Warsaw Pact. Thankfully, it didn't come to that. Cheerio!